Hey there, it's Kevin Kennedy, and welcome to episode number 13 of Fusion Fridays. By the end of this video, you'll be able to surface model a fan blade in the patch workspace. For this video, I'll be using one of the sample files located in your data panel. To get started, click on the data panel icon in the upper left hand corner and scroll down until you see the sample section. Double click on the basic training folder and scroll down until you see number 12 hyphen patch. Double click on the patch folder and then we'll double click on the fan hub file to open it up. Once open, you'll see that the sample file is read only. We'll have to make a copy of the file before we can do any work to it. To make a copy of the file, simply go to File, Save As, and then you can change the name or the location. And then hitting that blue Save button will create a copy of the file. You'll notice in this sample file that the Fusion 360 engineers have went ahead and created the inner part of the fan, as well as some sketch geometry that we'll use to create the blades. The first thing we'll have to do is switch to the surface modeling workspace, which is known as the patch workspace. To switch to that workspace, simply select patch from the workspace dropdown list. Then we'll use the loft command to create the first blade. Once we have the first blade finished, we'll go ahead and copy it around the perimeter of this inner hub. I'll select Loft from the Create dropdown menu. Then I'll select the inner line, making sure to select the line and not the endpoint of the line. And second, I'll select the outer line. After selecting both lines, you'll see that we have a surface stretching from one to the other so we can click OK in the Loft dialog box. At this point, our fan blade would be quite sharp. We'll want to use the Trim command to trim or round over the edges of the blade. Toggle open the Sketches folder and click the light bulb icon to turn sketch number 7 on, which has a rounded spline. Then I'll select the Trim tool from the Modify dropdown list. When using the trim command, you'll first have to select the geometry or bodies that you want to use as the trim tool. In this case, I'll need to select the spline that I just turned on. Then we'll need to select outside of the spline as that's the surface area that we no longer need. You'll notice that Fusion 360 turns the outer surface area red, which lets us know which part of the surface will be removed or trimmed away. Click OK to take a look at the results, and we'll turn off the sketch number 7 as we no longer need to reference it. Now, in its current state, the blade is just a surface representation, so it has no real thickness to it. To fix this, we'll need to select the Thicken command from the Create dropdown list. I'll select the blade as the faces to thicken, and then I'll change the direction to Symmetric. Then I'll set the thickness to 0.5 millimeters, and you'll see that it will go 0.5 millimeters in both directions, giving us a total thickness of 1 millimeter. Last but not least, I'll click OK to confirm the thickness and to exit the dialog box. Now we'll want to pattern this blade around the cylinder. To do this, we can use the circular pattern feature that's located under the Create dropdown menu and the Pattern Flyout folder. I'll change the pattern type to Features, and then I'll select the Thicken command in the timeline below. For the axis, I'll select the perimeter of the cylinder. I'll set the quantity to 8, and then I'll click OK. Taking a look at the fan blade, I think I'll go ahead and decrease the number of blades, and instead increase each individual blade's surface area. To decrease the number of blades, I'll double click on the circular pattern feature in the timeline below. As double clicking allows you to go back and edit a feature, which will affect all those other features that are dependent on that feature. I'll reduce the quantity from 8 to 5, and then I'll click OK. 
To extend or increase the size of the blades, we'll want to alter the original blade. And then all of the copies will update accordingly. To do this, I'm going to roll the timeline back. I'll click the black timeline slider and drag it back just before the thicken command. You'll notice that everything disappears. We'll have to turn the surface body back on. To do so, toggle open the bodies folder and click the light bulb icon for the surface body. Next, I'll use the extend command from the modify drop down menu. I'll select the outer edge of the blade and I'll type out 20 millimeters. And you'll see that it instantly increased or extended the size of the blade. I'll click OK and then I'll drag the timeline slider back to the front. And you'll see that our changes were automatically updated on each and every blade because we used that circular pattern command. Another thing we could do to improve this blade is increase the size of the inner edges where the blades connect to the hub. I'll drag the timeline slider back to just before the thicken command. Then I'll turn the hub body off so it's easier to see this inner edge of the blade. I'll select the extend command from the modify dropdown list, and we'll want to select all three edges here. And then we'll extend them by typing out 10 millimeters, and I'll go ahead and click OK. We'll have to roll the timeline back to the front, and we'll also have to turn the hub body back on by clicking the light bulb in the Fusion 360 browser. Now you'll see that we have a nice large fan blade, and hopefully this video helps you guys start to see how quickly you can change a surface model simply by modifying one of the original surfaces. Thanks for watching. If you have any questions at all about this tutorial or Fusion 360 questions in general, then be sure to comment them below. Hit that thumbs up icon if you learned something in this video and click subscribe followed by that little bell icon to be notified of more Fusion 360 tutorials.